Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our virtual Mishnah Berurah share. We're holding a Mishnah Berurah Chelak Aleph. We are continuing to learn Hilchas Tzitzis, and we'll be learning today. Mi Hashem Dav Chaf Talad Amit Aleph. We are here in Simon Yud Beis, and we have been discussing Dvarim Hapaislim B'Tzitzis, things that render Tzitzis puzzle, damage that can happen to Tzitzis that would render the Tzitzis puzzle, and it's a rather complex topic, and I have to admit that this is the second time I'm recording today's share. I recorded the share, and then after I recorded the share, I, something was troubling me, and I realized that I made a critical error. I made a toast in understanding a machlekes rishayim. Chazal tells kishem shemakablum schar al hadrisha, kach makablum schar al haprisha. So I reviewed the share, and I saw that the mistake that I made uh, really ran as a thread throughout the shear, so I discarded that shear, and I'm actually recording the shear over again. So, um, a brief introduction so that we could provide context to today's shear. When we had the, when we said the previous shear, again, we were discussing what happens if tzitzit strings rip. At what point do the tzitzis become puzzle? So really what we need to know for an accurate analysis of this topic, we need to begin with an understanding of what is the proper length of tzitzit strings lechatchilo. When you set about to make tzitzits, how long should the tzitzit strings be? And we learned earlier that the proper length, the proper overall length for the tzitzit strings is Shneim Asar Gudlim, 12 thumb breaths, which comes out to approximately 28 centimeters, 11 inches, 11 to 12 inches, somewhere around there. Now, everybody agrees that that's how long the tzitzit strings should be when we first make them. And that measurement is taken from the first knots after the strings come out of the baguette, so the double, the set of double knots closest to the begin of the tzitzits, that's where we begin measuring. And we measure all the way to the end, all the way to the tips of the loose tzitzit strings. That length is supposed to be shtem osar gudlim. And certainly l'chadchila, when we first make the tzitzits, that's the length that the strings have to be. The question becomes, what happens if the tzitzit strings tear? If the tzitzit strings rip so that, so that they are now shorter than shneim osar gudlim, at what point does that become a problem? At what point are the tzitzit's puzzle? Now, yesterday on Chav Gimel Amit Beis, beginning really with Chav Gimel Amit Aleph, going into Chav Gimel Amit Beis, the Mechaber presented to us the Shitas Harosh. And indeed, if you look back in the beginning of the very beginning of Sif Aleph, Simon Yud Bey Sif Aleph, the first Ice Aleph of the Be'er Hagoyla. The Be'er Hagoyla says that the Mechaber is based on Gemarit Menaches Lam Ches Amit Beis Lepirish Harosh. So what we learned in the previous year is all based on the Shitas Harosh. The Rush holds that while the Tzitzis are supposed to be Shneim Asar Gudlim, at the outset, when you make the tzitzits, you're supposed to have shtem asar gudlim. If the tzitzits rip, you don't, you're not required to have any strings that maintain the length of yud beis gudlim. Even if all the strings end up being shorter than yud beis gudlim, the tzitzits are still kosher. What do you need in order for the tzitzits to be kosher? You need four strings. Remember, what are tzitzits comprised of? On each corner, we took four strings, we put them through a hole in the baguette, and then we looped them over to make eight. But it's really four strings. On each corner, we really have four strings. According to the rush, after the tzitzits tear, we still have to have four strings, and each one of those four strings has to have a minimum length of Kidei Aniva. Now, what does Kidei Aniva mean? So first of all, what does Kidei Aniva mean? And at which, from which point do we measure the Kidei Aniva? So Kidei Aniva means 
you have to have a length long enough that you could make a slip knot, and the slip knot should go around all of the torn strings. You have to be able to wrap the string that's torn around the other torn strings and make a slip knot, and that's the minimum length. So over here, I just went ahead and I made a slip knot. I took one string and I made a slip knot around the other seven. You don't need a very long string for that. The Paiskim seemed to say that a string of two goodlim, which is approximately four centimeters, four centimeters to give you an idea. I have my trusty little ruler over here. That is four centimeters. Okay, so there you have. That's Kidei Aniva, say the Paiskim. So, if you have four strings, and each one of those four strings has a minimum length of Kidei Aniva, you're still okay. Where do you measure the Kidei Aniva from? So from the Mechaber and the Mishtabrur that we learned yesterday, it's obvious that we measure that Kidei Aniva not from here, not from the point at which the tzitzits exit the beged, but from here, the point at which the loose strings exit the last set of double knots. That's where we have to have Kidei Aniva. So we need that four of the original strings should still have a length of Kidei Aniva. What does that mean in practical terms? So the first thing that we have to remember is, again, we make the tzitzis by taking four strings, putting it through the baguette, and ending up with eight strings. Now, I'm going to focus on the way we typically make tzitzis. The way we typically make tzitzis, we make sure that when the eight strings exit the last set of double knots, we know that from the original four strings, half of each string is on one side of the knot, and the other half of the four strings are on the other side of the knot. So, when you take a look at one side of the knot, this is one of the original four strings, this is another, this is another, and this is another. Each one is half of a different string. Each one is half of one of the original four strings, with its other half being on the other side of the double knot. The way we make tzitzits, it cannot be that on one side of the knot, two strings are actually each one half of the same string. These two strings that are coming out of the same side of the knot, they cannot be two halves of the same string. The other half of this string has to be on the other side of the knot. That's the way we make tzitzits. And I'm going to, in order to keep things simple, I'm going to concentrate on that. I'm going to focus on that method of making tzitzits, and I'm going to assume that that's the way our tzitzits are made. Now, therefore, according to the rush, it comes out like this. Let's say <clears throat> on one side of the knot, every single one of the strings was completely severed all the way down to the knots. Okay, I still have the other half of all of those four strings are intact on the other side of the knot. So do I have four strings that have a minimum length of Kidei Aniva? Yes, I do. Let's say all four strings were completely severed on one side of the knot, and on the other side of the knot, all four strings were severed to a length of Kidei Aniva. I'm still kosher, because I have four strings that have a minimum length of Kidei Aniva. When do I run into trouble, according to the rush? Well, let's say one string is completely severed on one side of the knot, and another string is completely severed on the other side of the knot. Or one string is completely severed on one side of the knot, and on the other side of the knot, one string is severed to a length of less than Kidei Aniva. Or on both sides of the knot, one string is less than Kidei Aniva on one side, and another string is less than Kidei Aniva on the other side. Now, since it's on two different sides of the knot, they might be the same string. We don't know for certain that this is the other half of this string, but we definitely have a suffix. 
It could be. And it's a suffix daraisa. Since it's a mitzvah, say daraisa. You're wearing a bag of down confis, you need tzitzitz. Therefore, the tzitzitz are puzzle. But unless you have one string on one side that's less than Kidaniva, and another string on the other side that's less than Kidaniva, your tzitzitz are still kosher. Because you still have Kidei Aniva of each one of the original four strings. That's what we learned yesterday. That's based on the Shitas Harosh. Today, we're going to learn the Shitas Rabbeinu Tam. Now, the Rabbeinu Tam is much more machmir than the Rosh. Remember, we started off the Hakdama by saying that originally, the Tzitzitz are supposed to have an overall length of Yud Beis Gudlin. The Rush said, once you made the tzitzit pakashras, I don't care. You don't have to have any strings that still have a length of Yud Bey's Goodlin. They even if all the strings are ripped, as long as you still have Kide Aniva of each one of the original four strings, you're still okay. That was the Sheet of Rush. Rabbeinu Tam says no. The Rabbeinu Tam says. <clears throat> Tzitzits are originally four strings. We took the four strings, we doubled them over to make eight. Says Rabbeinu Tam, what is the proper overall length of tzitzits? Yud Bey's Goodlim, but it's not Yud Bey's Goodlim on one side of the knot. It's Yud Bey's Goodlim on both sides of the knot. Because again, how long are the tzitzit supposed to be originally? You're supposed to measure from the first set of double knots where the tzitzit exited the hole in the baghead all the way to the end of all eight strings. And all of them are supposed to be Yud Bey's Goodlin. Says the Rabbeinu Tam, you're right. If a certain amount of tzitzit strings ripped and you have less than Yud Bey's Goodlin, the tzitzitz could still be kosher. But what do you need in order for it to be kosher, says Rabbi Tam? You need that two of the original four strings should be shalem. Two of the original four strings should be shalem. They should be completely intact. Now, what does that mean? In order for two of the original four strings to be completely intact, well... We took those two strings, we put them into the baguette, we doubled them over. And now it made four strings. Two come out on one side of the knot, two come out on the other side of the knot. But in order for these four strings, right? Because now it's four that came from two. It was two, it was doubled over. In order for these four strings to be considered completely intact, all four of them need to have an overall length of 12 goodlim from the point at which they exit the baguette until the end of the strings. Oh. <clears throat> Therefore, according to the Rabbeinu Tam, what do you need in order for your tzitzits to be kosher? You need, let's say, let's analyze now. Let's say, and again, we're bearing in mind, I'm assuming that the tzitzits are made the way we make them. So that, again, this is one half of the four strings, this is the other half of the four strings. Well, let's say two strings on one side of the knot ripped off, but you still, and maybe you don't even have Kedaya Niva. So two strings on one side of the knot ripped off. Well, if it's two strings on the same side of the knot, that means it's two different strings from the original four. So those two strings are no longer intact but the other two strings are still intact. So you'd say it's a still kosher. Let's say a third string ripped off. Well, let's analyze it. If it's a third string on the same side of the knot, that means that of the original four strings, three of them are already ripped. Now, it might be true that those three, the other half of them, on the other half of the knot, is still completely intact. So you're right. Let's say three strings on one side of the knot became torn off. Let's say that all three of them even still have a minimum length of Kidea Niva. 
but it's three of the original four strings. So out of the original four strings, how many of them still have an overall length of Yud Beis Gudlim on both sides? Only two. Because three of the original four strings are compromised. On this side of the knot, three of those strings only have Kidei Aniva. Now you're right, on the other side of the knot, if on the other side of the knot, they're not ripped at all, on the other side of the knot, they have an overall length of Yud Beis Gudlim. But the Rabbeinu Tam says that's not enough. According to the Rabbeinu Tam, you need that two of the original four strings are completely intact. Meaning that on both sides of the knot, they have an overall length of Yud Beis Gudlim. So again, you want to see a perfect point of, of departure between the Rush and the Rabbeinu Tam? Well, if you have your tzitzits and on one side of the knot, three strings are torn off. Let's say they're even torn off completely. According to the Rush, the tzitzits are kosher. You know why? Well, three of the original four strings are compromised. So what? All four of the original four, uh, four strings still have Kidea Niva or even more on the other side of the mat. According to the Rush, that's okay. According to the Rabbin Tam, these tzitzis are puzzle because three strings on one side of the knot tore off, even if they still have Kidea Niva, but on that side of the knot, they don't have Shtemos or Gudlim. And according to the Rabbin Tam, you need that at least two of the original four strings have to still retain an overall length of Yud Beis Gudlim. And we're going to see that the Ramah and the Mishnah is going to Paskin like the Ramah, that Lechatchila was supposed to be Noyig like the Rabbeinu Tam. So according to Rabbeinu Tam, you lose three strings on one side of the knot, you got a problem. Even if you lose two strings on one side and one string on the other side, and when I say lose, I mean less than Yud Bey's Goodlim. If, to, if three strings get cut, two on one side of the knot, and one on the other side of the knot, and you take a ruler, and you measure from the first two knots that come out of the Beget until the end of those torn three strings, if you don't have Yud Bey's Goodlim, according to the Rabbi Tam, those tzitzits are not kosher. Because it, since you have three compromised strings, two on one side and one on the other side, they might be three separate strings. The two strings on one side of the knot <clears throat> are certainly two different strings. So we know for certain that you now have two strings that are not your base goodlim. Then on the other side of the knot, we have a third string that's less than your base goodlim. Now it's possible that that is actually the other half of one of the other strings. So maybe you still only have two strings that are compromised, but maybe not. Maybe it's a third string, and then you have three strings that are compromised. And if they're less than your base good limb, that's possible according to Rabbi Tam, Suffolk with Arisa, we go Lechomer. Okay, that gives you a pretty fair uh, representation of the Rush and the Rabbi Tam. <clears throat> now, with that hakdama, let's read this very complicated, complex sugya inside in the Shulchan Aruch, top line, Chavtalan Amen Aleph, in the middle of the line. Ula Rabbeinu Tam, according to the Sheet of Rabbeinu Tam, Loi Machshirim, we cannot say that tzitzes are kosher, Ela and I'm going to have to read this very carefully. And this is where I made a mistake in my first rendering of today's shir. Ula Rabbeinu Tam, according to Rabbeinu Tam, loy machshirim, we cannot consider this as kosher. Ela b'nishtayru shnei chutin shalemim. Unless we have two completely intact strings from the original four. Dahainu. What does that mean? To have two completely intact strings. Dahainu. Arba'a Rushim, four ends. Because remember, 
each one of the strings that go into the tzitzitz gets doubled over. So two strings make four. And the way we make our tzitzitz, half of each string is coming out of one side of the knot, half of the other, the other half of those two strings is coming out of the other end of the knot. But when the Rabbeinu Tam says that you need two strings that are shleimim, says the Mechaber, what does that mean? Da'ainu arba aroshim, four ends. Shekol echad meharoshim, where each one of those four ends, aroch shneim asar gudlim, have to have a minimum length of shneim asar gudlim measured from the two original double knots close to the beged to the tips. So according to Rabbeinu Tam, what do you need intact? You need that at least four of the strings. But four of the strings doesn't mean two halves of the same string. It means two of the original strings have to be completely intact. The way we make our tzitzits, right? So you need two on each side that are completely intact. A length of shnei or gudlim. Otherwise, it's not kosher. Oz makshirim. If we have two that are completely intact, then we could say that the tzitzits are kosher. Kishen nifsiku ashnei chuten acherim. If the other two strings are ripped, the tzitzits could still be kosher. Im nishtayir bahem kidei aniva. Says the Rabbeinu Tam, when could tzitzit still be kosher, even if there are strings ripped? If two of the original four strings are completely intact, shnei maser gudlim, from here to the end, and the other two strings are torn, but they still have kidei aniva, then the tzitzit could be kosher. Aval, however, third line down in the middle of the line, continues the Mechaber, Aval, however, if three of the strings are torn, even if those three strings still maintain a minimum length of kedai aniva, psulim, that's it, it's kosher, because you do not have two strings that are completely intact. Based on this, says the Mechaber, based on this Rabbi Tam. And over here again, we're going to have to read so carefully because the Mechaber is going to use very strange phraseology, which the Mishnah says the phraseology doesn't really hold water. It's not really Meduyik. And that's also going to be a little complex. Okay. Umipnei kach. Because of this Shittas Rabbi Tam, says the Mechaber. Kishenechtiku shloisha roshim. Let's say Roshim means four ends, four ends of the string, three ends. Umemnekach, kishenechtekru shloisha Roshim. Let's say three of your tzitzit strings become torn, okay? Kishenechtekru shloisha Roshim. If three of your tzitzit strings become torn, well, let's stop here for a second, and before we read what the Mechaber says, let's analyze the case based on what we understand. We're going according to Shittas Rabbeinu Tam. Three strings tore. Now I'm going to pick three strings from the same side of the knot. Okay, three strings tore. If they're on the same side of the knot, then I know that three strings represents three of the original four strings, right? Because the four strings on one side of the knot represent one, two, three, and four of the four original strings. You cannot have on the same side of the knot two halves of the same string. So on one side of the knot, the way we make tzitzits, one, two, three, and four, these represent half of the original four strings. If three of them are torn, that means three of the original four strings are compromised. Now, it's very nice that on the other side of the knot, they're full length. On the other side of the knot, they're shnei maser gudlim. But the Rabbeinu Tam said they have to be shleimim. Shleimim means that on both sides of the knot, they have shnei maser gudlim. Over here, three of the strings are ripped. Now, very nice. They might have a length of kedai on this side of the knot, 
but that's not intact. Shleimim means name Arthur Goodlin. So if three strings ripped on one side of the knot, do I have two strings that are completely left intact? No, I don't. So it's a puzzle. According to Rabbi Tam. Now, that was based on the way we make tzitzits. Let's divert. Let's say not according to the way we make tzitzits. Well, if it's not according to the way we make tzitzits, then it's possible that the four strings on one side of the knot are really not um, four halves of the original four strings. It could be that the strings are mixed up, and it could be, let's say, that these two strings are the two halves of string number one, and the third string is half of string number two, and the fourth string is half of string number three, and string number four is completely on the other side. So maybe if three strings got ripped, maybe I only have two compromised strings. You're right, maybe. But it's the Suffolk Daraisa. Suffolk Daraisa, we go to Chumrah. So it's a puzzle. So either way, if you have three strings that are ripped, let's look at another case. Let's say two strings are ripped on one side of the knot and one string is ripped on the other side of the knot. Okay, according to the way we make tzitzits, there's a suffix. Maybe it's three different strings. Maybe this is string number one, this is string number two, and the other one that you got on the other side, maybe it's string number three. So again, you have three compromised strings. It's a puzzle. But maybe not. Maybe this is string number one, this is string number two, and this is the other half of string number two. So maybe you only have two compromised strings. You're right, maybe. Savant Daraisa. Puzzle. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you make tits the proper way. If you don't make tits the proper way, bottom line, if you have three strings that are ripped to the extent that they're less than Schneem Osar Goodlin, 11 inches, 28 centimeters, from here to here, if you have less than that on three strings, according to Rabbi Tom, the tits are puzzled. Again, that's what he said over here. If three strings are ripped, even if all three of them have Kidea but they don't have Yudbeis Gudlim, Psulim, the Tzitzitz are puzzle. Three strings tore. And here's where I told you that the Machabi uses strange phraseology. Look what he says. If three strings became torn, if you are not careful at the time that you made the tzitzitz, what he means is, if you didn't make the tzitzitz the way we make them, and you didn't make sure to keep half of each string on one side and half of each string on the other side, Mechavah says, if you didn't do that, then chashinon, then we have to be concerned, shemakol roishu michot acher. Maybe each one of the three torn strings represents a different one of the original four. Venimtza she'en kan elechot echot So you have three compromised strings, and you only have one with a proper, complete overall length of 12 gudlim on both sides. Helkach misveik a puzzle, and therefore misafik it's puzzle. Now, what's strange about the phraseology of the mechaber? Again, the mechaber says the mechaber is saying like this: You have three ripped strings, says the mechaber. If you let's say all three are on one side, if you weren't careful when you made the tzitzits and you didn't make sure that half of each string is on this side and half of each string is on that side then we have to be chayshish that maybe the three strings that ripped are each one of the original four strings. Well, if you were careful when you made the tzitzits, and you did make sure that half of each string is on one side, half of each string is on the other side, then certainly there are three of the original four strings. So what does the Bechari mean? If you weren't careful, then we have to be chayshish. And if you are careful, if you are careful, then it's definitely 
three different strings, and it's definitely possible according to Rabbi Adam. So the phraseology is strange, and the Mishnah is going to point that out, and the Mishnah is going to say that those words of the Mechaber don't go on the case that the Mechaber just gave. They go on the next case. So again, let's read it inside. Umipnekach, four lines down. Umipnekach, based on this understanding, based on the Rabbi Adam, if three strings became ripped, if you were not careful when you made the tzitzits to make sure that half of each string is on one side and half is on the other side, then we have to be concerned maybe each one of the strings that tore represent a different one of the original four strings. So now we only have left one string with a proper overall length of yud base Gudlam on both sides of the Kesher and Hilkach Misveik Apostle and therefore the Sitzes Apostle. Avil, however, Let's say only two strings got ripped. Okay. If only two strings got ripped, and it doesn't matter which side of the Kesher. Let's say the way we do the tzitzits. So if two strings get ripped on the same side of the Kesher, we know it's two different strings. Okay. You have Kedai Aniva on those two strings, and the other six strings are fully intact, your tzitzis are kosher. Why not? You have two of the original four strings have uh, an overall length of yod base Gudlim, and you might have two of the original four strings that are compromised. They have less than yod base Gudlim, but they have Kedah Aniva. So according to Rabbi Adam, it's kosher. Va'alacha kisfar rishayna, the Bechamr says that we pass it like the rush. We won't make it. Me, however, where it's possible, it would be good and proper to be chayshish for the more chamer dekashita of the rabbeinu tam. Says the Ramav that hagin ke rabbeinu tam. We are noyik like rabbeinu tam. Haga the choshkein im dictate. And here the Rama really points out the 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 funny phraseology of the mechaber. The Choshkein im diktek she unikarin or bar rashi b'shabetzad echad. Certainly, the way we make tzitzits, so we know that one half of the original four strings is on one side of the kesher, and the other half is on the other side. The nifsiku shleisha rashi b'shabetzad echad, and three tzitzits on one side of the kesher became torn. The puzzle, certainly, it's puzzle. The azvaday nifsiku shleisha chutin, because then we know for certain that three of the original four strings are compromised. And if it's less than Yud Beis Gudlim, even on one side of the knot, it's puzzle. The Nifsiku B'Shnei Tzad, the Nami puzzle. If it's two on one side and one on the other side, it's also puzzle. Because Shema Shloi Shechut name. Because we at least have a Suffolk that you might have three strings compromised. And it's a Suffolk Daraisa, and we have to go L'Chumra. Wow. It's rough. <laughs> very, very complex. I hope I'm giving it over in a clear manner. Okay, now let's take a look at the Mishnah Brewer over here. Ois kot leches, ul rabbeinu tam. So right away, what did we see? Just basic 30,000 feet, the rabbeinu tam. The difference between the rabbeinu tam and the rush, the rush holds, yes. When we first make the tzitzits, we need an overall length of Yud Beis Gudlim. But once we made the tzitzits pakashras, if the tzitzits tear, it's enough to have kidei aniva, of all four strings. Not only that, but another major difference between the Rush and the Rabbeinu Tam is that Kedei Aniva only has to be on one side of the knot. So like we said in the Rush, even if all four strings were completely severed on one side of the Kesher, if you have Kedei Aniva on the other side, so on one side, all four strings were completely severed. On the other side of the knot, all four strings were cut off, but you have Kedei Aniva on all four strings. So, since we know that half of of the original four strings was on this side, and half of the original four strings was on this side, if on this side we have Kedei Aniva of the original four strings, according to the Rush, we're okay. Rabbeinu Tam says, no, two of the original four strings 
must be completely intact. Completely intact, meaning from here all the way to the end, you got to have good base, good limb, and it's got to be on both sides of the knot. Why? Why is Rabbi the Tam so machmer? Explains the Mishnah, Taimoi, the rationale of the Rabbi the Tam is, the Shnei Chutin Shehein Arba, Anu Noistim Bim Kaim Tchelis. The way the Mishnah is explaining how we handle Tchelis and Lavan, which is a major machloikis, the Rishonim, the Gra, it's a major machloikis. But the way the Mishnah gives it to us here, according to Rabbi Tam, you, what we used to do was, when we had Tchelis, we took two white strings and two trellis strings. We put them through the baguette, and we ended up with four trellis strings and four lovan strings. Says Rabbi Nutam, nowadays we don't have trellis, so we put in four lovan strings to equal eight lovan strings. So again, they used to only put in two lovan strings to arrive at four lovan strings. We put in four lavan strings to make eight lavan strings. The Rabbeinu Tam holds that at least two of our four strings, two out of our four strings, represent the two lavan strings that we put into the tzitzits even when we had tchelis. At least those two have to be completely intact. I just got Des im loy diktek. So I'm not going to reiterate this again, but the Mishtabrura, I told you that the phraseology of the Mechaber was a little bit strange, and I pointed out what the logical inconsistency was, right? The, the Mechaber said, according to the Rabbeinu Tam, if three strings became ripped, so the Mechaber said, if you were careful when you made the tzitzits, so if three strings got ripped, we have to worry that those three strings might be three out of the original four, and therefore you have three compromised strings, and you only have one string fully intact, which is not good according to Rabbeinu Tam. Says the Mishnabur, Kasha, the, word, the wording of the Mechaber is very difficult. who im dictate, the Mechaber says, this is a problem if you weren't careful. Says the Mechaber, it's certainly a problem if you were careful. If you were careful, so then we know for sure that three strings on one side of the knot represent three out of the original four strings. So what do you mean in loy dictate? If you were dictate, it's certainly a, po- a problem. So he answers the Kasha. He says, Well, you can answer is like this. The knockout loy dictate mishum sefer. When the Mechaber said this, and he noted, if you weren't careful, he was going on the case that he gives you later on. It says to Mishtabura, the Messiah, where the Mechabit concluded, and he said, Avalim roshim. The Mechabit said like this, if three strings are caught, then it's a problem. But if two strings are caught, then the Mechabit said, if two strings are caught, then the tzitzits are kosher as long as you have kedei aniva. Because if two strings were cut, so that means two strings are compromised, but two strings are still completely intact. So okay, so you have the two intact strings, and then you need the other two strings to have kedei aniva. Says the Mishtabura, that's the case that the Mechaber mentioned if you weren't careful when you made the tzitzits. Let's see it inside. If only two tzitzits became ripped, the aniva. We could say that the tzitzits are kosher as long as those two ripped strings still have kidei aniva. That's only true if when you made the tzitzits you weren't careful. Avalim dictate. But if you were careful when you made the tzitzits, so then. Oh, see, what the Mishabur is saying is like this. The Mechaber is saying, what's the halacha if two strings on one side of the knot became ripped off? So the Mechaber said, well, if two strings got ripped off, you have two compromised strings. So in order for the tzitzit to be kosher, 
you need Kedai Aniva. That's what you need. You need Kedai Aniva so that you have Kedai Aniva left of those two strings. Says the Mishtabura, when is it true that you have to have Kedai Aniva of those two strings? That's only if you weren't careful. Avalim dictate, but if you were careful, so then then if two strings on one side of the knot became ripped, kosher I feel aniva. You don't need kidaniva. You know why? Because if you were careful when you made the tzitzits, you know that the two strings that got ripped are two different strings, right? And you know that the other half of those two strings is on the other side of the kesher. On the other side of the kesher, you have kidaniva. And those two strings don't have to be completely intact because you still have two other strings that are completely intact. So what's the problem? You have two strings on this side that are completely whole. You have four strings on this side that are completely whole. You have two strings over here that were cut to Kedai Aniva. So fine. So you have two compromised. You have two, Let's say that we even severed completely. Two strings on one side were severed completely. So fine. So you have two strings that are less than Shtemas or Gudlim. And then you have the other two, you have, um, the other two are fine. What's the problem? You have them on the other side. Because the two strings that were ripped on one side of the knot are still whole on the other side of the knot. And the other two strings are completely intact. But if it's one on one side and one on the other side, and you lost one entire string. So again, what's he saying? He's saying like this. According to the Rabbi Tam, let's analyze the case, because I'm sorry, this is just so complex. According to the Rabbi Tam, if you have two strings that got ripped off on one side of the knot. So if you are careful when you made the tzitzits, so then you know that this is two out of the original four strings. In that case, you don't need Kedai Aniva on the side where it got ripped off. Let's say it got ripped off completely, all the way down to the knot on one side. Okay, so what's the din of these tzitzits now, according to Rabbi Tam? You have two tzitzits, so you originally... Right? The tzitzits are originally made out of four strings. String number one and string number two are compromised. Because on one side of the knot, you have two strings that are completely ripped off. Fine. So those two strings are compromised. Are those two... Do you have Kedai Aniva on those two strings? Yes. Because the other half of those two strings are completely intact on the other side of the knot. So let's say string number one and string number two, you have Kedai Aniva. You have nothing on one side but you have full length on the other side. So you have Kedai Aniva. The other two strings are completely intact. You have Shtei Masa Gudlin on both sides of the Kesher. So according to Rabbi Tam, this is fine. Let's say one string ripped off to less than Kedai Aniva on one side, and one string ripped off to less than Kedai Aniva on the other side. That's puzzle. Both according to the Rosh and the Rabbi Tam. Because maybe it's two halves of the same string. And now you have one string that's completely gone. Because you don't have Kedai Aniva on this side or on that side. Let's say you weren't careful when you made the tzitzits. Now it's possible that if two strings rip on one side of the knot, it might be both halves of the same string. That's when you need Kedai Aniva. Because if you don't have Kedai Aniva, maybe you lost a string Entirely, and, and or, or um, if you don't have, right? If you weren't medactic, then you have to have kedai aniva because if you don't have kedai aniva, then that string might be totally gone. Okay. I got yod machshvin bechdei aniva ritzay deloim arfilom hayasher kedai aniva rak beechad mehem. Right. If, if um, <laughs> right, you have to have a Kedai Aniva. Avalim Nifsiku Shtayim Mishnayt Stadin. I'm sorry, Ritzan Eloimar. Afilim Haya Ashir Kedai Aniva Rak Be'echad Mehem. It's still kosher. 
If two strings ripped, one on one side, one on the other, so you still have Kedayan even on the other side. It's okay. The Chanal Masif Katan, hey, I just got your Alif, a halacha, Pashat, the Mutta, Lavarach, Alein. He says that we paskin really like the Rush, like the Mokuladik opinion of the Rush. And he says, Pashat, the Mutta, Lavarach, Alein, you would even be allowed to make a bracha on these tzitzits, Ukubay Shabiyan, or Bibir, halacha, like he states uh, Beferish in the Bir halacha. Okay, wow. I thought we would get to do more than a page. No way. We didn't even get to finish the page. We'll continue next time with Sif Bays. I hope I'm making this very complicated and complex sugya clear. I hope I'm not uh, making it overly complex. Thank you so much for joining me for Liman Atar. This was Liman Atar. She will make it against Klai Yisrael. The Rajab should send Yeshua's for us. Parnasa should do him to all those in need. And we should be zaykh to see the BSK. Amen. Be well.